Hey everybody, Doug here from 2 Plus Stuff, and in this video I want to talk about how to achieve some of the painting effects that I've been able to get down on some of the Necromunda terrain that I've done from Dark Uprising. A lot of folks have asked how I achieved the aged look on the wallpaper for things, and I'll throw some pictures up here so you can take a look at it, but it's a very simple technique, and if you know me, if you've watched me paint on this channel, you know that I am not an expert painter. I am not a golden demon guy or a crystal brush or whatever you know competition you want to fill in there. I am a man who is efficient at painting. I paint quite a lot of stuff. Uh, turnover is very, very quick in the 2 Plus Studio, and so um, that's the tips that I wanted to share with you today. So the method we're going to talk about, uh, I'm going to use for an example Ushab T-Bone over a brown primer with an Agrax Earthshade wash. It is two paints and a primer, right, depending on how you prime things. I'll go through what I use specifically, and all I need is a brush that I don't mind ruining, uh, one that particularly has the bristles kind of spread out a bit. It's a very simple three-step process, and what's nice about it is uh, if you line up all the terrain, you get it all primed, you just knock this out incredibly fast on each one of them, and all of a sudden you will have a full set of terrain with matching colors that look aged and customized and different and unique and uh, do it for a very short amount of time. That was a dumb way to say that. You'll have it done in a short amount of time. So anyway, let's not waste any more time. We'll go down to the painting cam. I'll show you. It's going to be very brief, very, very brief. And um, we'll come back and we'll talk about ways to make it happen even faster. Okay, here we are with our pieces. I'm going to start off with a layer of Ushab T-Bone. And here's the key to this is your first layer is supposed to look terrible. Okay, all the things that they tell you to do when you're painting, you don't do it here. So we, we thin down the Ushab T-Bone quite a bit and... We're gonna make this super streaky look and we want it to look rough. Uh, get a lot of textures in there. As you can see, it's super thin. Usually that would be great because then you would do a thin coat afterwards, but we're not gonna do that. Yeah, just pry it around. Make sure there's some brown showing, that kind of thing. We want it to look terrible because when we go back over it and build the color back up with Ushab T-Bone, it'll make it look awesome. It'll make it look like this, this nasty looking layer is part of a wallpaper that's been there and it's kind of just fallen apart. And we'll be really bad at painting and get in there all the cracks and crevices. And when this dries, we'll come back with a little bit of Agrax Earthshade. And after giving it plenty of time to dry, we're back here at the side we were working on before. As you can see, it's looking real rough. All that brown is starting to show through. We're gonna take some Agrax Earthshade and we're gonna be really really rough on it so now as I said before uh, you know you want things to look really gross and nasty a way to save time because this is all about painting efficiently is you know you can do your crummy first layer and then go do over and do the metals and then you do Agrax Earthshade to everything it depends on what color you want the rest of this to be I opted to keep it brown uh, I did a few highlights with my normal stuff but for the most part you could potentially fit this into the washes you were already going to do on the rest of the pieces and that's super important for saving time. So we'll come right back after this has dried and we'll finish it all out. Now that the wash is all kinds of dry you can see there's still some faint hits, hints of Ushab T-Bone in there but for the most part we've dulled the, the brown down quite a bit and also showed some of that texturing that's actually in the walls here. So how do we get that last effect? To, uh, to make it look like this. Well, it's actually easier than you might think. And that is just to take your shop bone again. Uh, this time, you don't really have to thin it down. I actually sometimes will poke like the, the paint out of the pot, like so here, I'll show you. Just kind of get a little poke, a little on your brush there. And we are just going to stipple. Now, if you don't, if you've never heard that word before, stippling is when you um, push down and pull straight back up. So you just poke it and you take a brush that you don't mind because this will bend the bristles and you just poke it, poke, 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 poke a million times and you do that. Now, you can build the color up as much as you want, uh, as strong as you want. You can go all the way back up to Ushabti and just leave the sides looking grody or you can, um, you know, leave it pretty bare, something like that. What I do suggest though, to keep the, the different panels from looking identical is mix it up. So this one here, you can see I have it heavier up top and it kind of fades down to the left. Whereas on another side, 
you might focus here on the right or maybe have the top be all worn away and the bottom super strong something like that as long as you can you can control how each panel looks by how much you stipple paint on and so we'll do something like this maybe a little dot right there in the corner and that is pretty much it now depending on how far you want to go you can of course do it in the tops i tend to not do it too much in these little tiny little ones just because it can kind of be a pain it's a lot to clean up but that's all i do and so you can actually do this same method right apply a thin out layer that looks like garbage a wash and then a stippled on version of that same color you can do that with any color and to give you an example of what that might look like i have another one here and I'm not sure lighting wise, I'll try to get it. If not, I'll, I'll pull a picture up on the screen. But this was done the same way with the red and the yellow. I used um, an Avalorn Sunset, which is the, the base color or the, uh, the, yeah, the base coat for yellow. And then really thinned out, or super thinned out because that one has a lot of pigment to it. Um, put it on there, stippled on, and then went back over with some bits of metal to kind of make it look like worn steel uh, and the same thing with the red it's corn red stippled on and then i actually did an additional stipple very lightly with mephiston red to give it a little bit more pop but that's all there is to it and then from there anything you add on top of it is really really easy for example uh, i followed the gw tutorial to put posters on things uh, you can do hazard stripes blood stains all kinds of stuff uh, to make these pieces stand out so what i would suggest is when you do this pick a color that is kind of boring almost and, and the reason i say boring is because you know beige is fundamentally what this is and it makes all the unique things really pop out it makes the tanks pop out the posters the hazard stripes the blood the numbers like everything stands off of it because it's such a neutral color but because of the stippling and that kind of stuff it's not boring right it's it's added life to it and every side can look completely different you can see the same thing here on this platform where these pieces look incredibly worn so here we have these two are very simple right it's just the stippling thing and then i went back over and did these metal rails afterwards whereas this you know the thin layer and then i just stippled here in these big open areas to not make too much of a mess but that works out well because it makes a nice little shadowy gross look in the corners there so go ahead choose your colors and you can do whatever you like let's go back to the face up cam so as you can see that was incredibly quick and simple now as far as how to get this done even faster a few things i wouldn't mind pointing out to you is i take a big fan and i point it in a particular direction away from my painting table i i bang out the the layers that i talked about right you water down a bunch of Ushabti bone, slap it on here, and then put it there with the fan drying it. By the time you start doing that from your first piece to your last piece, by then the first piece that you did will be dry. So then you pick it up, you throw the wash on, you put it back on the fan, and you just kind of go that way, right? It's almost like um, you know a domino effect. You're just kind of keep rotating through there. And because it's only three steps, right? Your thin layer, your wash, and then your stippled layer, these things will bang out very, very quickly. If you happen to prime yours with lead belcher, you wanted like an iron corridor kind of look, this gets even faster because at that point, uh, you're not doing nearly as much cleanup um, as, as I had to do for mine because I had to go back and clean up the brown because I wanted that to be my base metal color. And so it can get even faster. So then it's just prime with lead belcher. You do the steps we just talked about and then you go back with one quick layer of lead belcher and just tidy things up in case you got it any in the corners. If you time it so that you do the first thinned layer and then any cleanups or something like that uh, and then you do the wash on the lead belcher as well as the shabti bone you're saving time in a dramatic way at that point because then all of your washes are happening uh congruously I, you know, congruently yes at the same time and then uh, you can speed it up even more then it's just the stippling afterwards and you can be kind of neat with that so with this effect, uh, I, I did take some extra time to do stuff like rust and posters and hazard stripes and things like that. The nice thing is it's very, very easy to add things to it, as I mentioned uh, at, at the end of the last segment. But in addition to that, uh, I was able to crank out most of the dark uprising terrain in a about a week hand painting no airbrush nothing like that just a fan and a little bit of time and because of the method it's only three steps all of a sudden it's really easy to start and stop it's you know two colors two paints depending on what you do for your metal so it's up to you 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more painting tips like this, go ahead and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see, uh, preferably based off stuff that I've already done because that can actually help with that. I'm not a painting well, wizard or anything like that, but I do focus on ways of getting things done fast because there are a myriad of painters out there who can teach you to do things well, but in terms of efficiency, I feel like there's not quite as many. So thank you all so much for watching. Tell me what you think in the comments down below, and I'll catch you next time. Happy Wargaming.